The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the March 16th, the uh, terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, that's this. During this next hour, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, go ahead and send me an email. Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers. Then, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. Right now, we've got a mixed bag out here. We've got a mixed bag the last several uh, days. Uh, Dow's off 93. The S&P is up 6. The NASDAQ 100 up 160, 1 and a quarter percent. Semis are up 2.5% or 76 points. Russell's off 25 bucks. Trade now at uh, 2334. What does that mean? We're going to go find out. Transports are off 156. What does that mean? We'll go find out. Spot volatilics trading lower. That should bode well for the S&P 500. That's trading out in 1960. Gold's up two bucks. Silver down 24 cents. Light to be crude off 72 pennies out there. Lead the charge dollar wise. The upside. Google up 37 bucks. The trade desk 31. Amazon's up 27. Lamb Research 19. Charter Communications 17. Those are the movers. The shakers. Booking Holdings off 40 bucks. MicroStrategy down 33. Mercado Libre off 22. GameStop 17. Ring Central off 13. Align Technology down. 12. So certainly we have things to look at. I want to look at what you want to look at. What you want to look at, what you want to look at is what? Well, let's start by taking a look at the daily charts for the equity for equity future contracts. So let's do this. Oh, my I'm sure. Oh, I was sharing with you the wrong screen. Nice going there, Steve. Oh, that's OK. Uh, let's stay here. We're at the 30 minute time frame chart. Then I'll go take a look at the Nah, We're going to look at the daily first uh, because that will, I think, so let me do this here, share screen. What I'm doing is using, so I've got four different, really five different monitors here. I'm just switching from one stationary monitor where we normally do the show from to some of my other screens out there. Here you're going to take a look at the daily charts for the four equity future contracts. The upper left is the ES Mini, upper right NQ, lower left Dow, lower right Russell 2000. Russell 2000, when I take a look at these charts here, one of the things that I like to take a look at, I want to understand, you should want to understand, hey, where's price trading in relationship to Stevie's green line? Or is that green line red? Well, if we take a look at the Russell 2000, and what's the importance of that line? Prices that pull back, I don't care whether it's a, it doesn't matter what time frame it is, doesn't matter what, what symbol it is we're looking at. If that line is green, and that line was developed, the green and red line, specifically for me to be able to answer the question, is this just a retracement back to a level of support or is there something else? Is there going to be a deeper retracement? And if so, where, is those, where are those levels of support? Well, here, if we take a look at the Russell 2000, what you can see, it's tested and rejected that green line. What does that mean? That means that it stays bullish as far as its pattern is out here. It doesn't have a bearish signal as we speak. And that's the indice or one of the that's a one that's that's one of the the equity future contract that is the weakest dollar wise it's off 25 bucks it's off one percent out there and as you take a look at it there and so if there the russell 2000 is just perfectly 
fine. That's why we take a look at the daily time frame. The ES mini, the Dow, prices are moving higher, doing less relative energy. Not an issue unless we see some type of bearish reversal signal. And we also need to see a close below the oscillator and change line. Remember, just pulling back to support would be a normal and natural thing, such as what the Russell 2000 is doing. But we don't stop there. What do you mean we don't stop there, Steve-O? I mean, we don't stop there. With regard to the Russell 2000, the next chart that I want to be able to share with you is a brand new profile that is attempting to form. So let's go take a look at it. Here, we've got the same four equity future contracts, but we have their profile levels. And those are going to assist us with understanding what the market is communicating to you and I at 1.11 in the afternoon. Let's begin by taking a look at the Russell 2000. Now, this is a new profile that is attempting to form. We're using Stevie's advanced Doppler tool out there. That means we won't know until 6.01 p.m. this evening whether it holds or not. Odds favor it will at this stage here, but if something gets wild during the day, I can see where these levels might change or just disappear. But right now, we use the information available to us. In order for the Russell 2000 to generate a change in trend signal, not only would it have to close below the oscillator and change line, it would need to close below 2309. It would need two consecutive closes below 2309. That is currently the new bottom of its profile, also known as support. Until that breaks, there's just a consolidation with inside support and resistance. No new profiles when it comes to the ES, the YM, and the NQ. But with regard to the NQ, which has a confirmed Gartley buy pattern, right now prices trading above the 13206 level. If price closes today above 13206.90, that's going to be a suggestion. One, that there's a further move. That further move could just be a retracement. Let's go measure those. But I would say odds favor that what the signal would be generating is that price is going to move all the way back up to its high. But we've got to take things one step at a time. That first step, taking a look at retracement levels from high to low. So let's go take a look at those out here. And uh, also prices up and near the 0.618 retracement. So another another reason to suggest that price target the 13529 ish type area out there. And we're taking a look at the NQ. I wasn't being exact with regard to the 0.618 retracement levels. Uh, but the, with, with regard to the profile aspect, again, closing above 13,206.90 is going to signal to you that price wants to continue to move higher. Yesterday, the ES Mini closed above resistance. Resistance was 39.49.75. Price closed above it. It takes out that TD9 top, says that it wants to move higher. Somebody out there is going to say higher to where, Steve-O? That's a great uh, question. The answer is 41.04.96. I'm not trying to be exact or anything, but if you want the exact number, it's 4104.96. Now, we're not going to use 4104.96 as the exact number. That happens to be the 1.618 expansion of its last set of major swing points. That's the 2020 high and the 2020 low. I don't really know any other way out here to project price. We did take a look at on the daily time frame. You may have noticed yesterday was day five. Today would be day, day number six of a potential TD9 count. That would say that there could be a high that forms between Thursday and Monday. A high of significance. Well, at this stage here, I don't know. It doesn't appear that that's the case out there. But that would be the patterns that you would be looking at. Now, with regard to today's activity, let's go to the charts that I originally was going to share with you, or I guess I was sharing with you. I just didn't realize it at the time. And that was the 30 minute time frame charts. And on the 30 minute time frame charts, boom, voila, I've got that screen. What you're going to look at, upper left hand corner, you had a TD9 count in the ES Mini. Price just pulls back to breakout support, 39.56. That is held. You had a TD9 count in the NQ, never even got back to support. Right now, price is trying to get back in its bullish mode out here. The Dow never got down to breakouts of 432.60. We'll be right back, folks. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019 finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, 
is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we got a question here. We got a couple questions. Uh, the first one coming in from our YouTube channel. This one is a uh, question reads like this: Stevo, please dissect uh, Apple for us. That buy the D point call last week is looking sweet. However, today's crossing of the B point is on a gap. Is this a red flag? Baseball eyeballs is the uh, name of the individual inside. Baseball eyeballs. I love that. Is that like Frank Viola? Baseball eyeballs. I used to play golf with Frank, actually coached our uh, girls' uh, baseball team uh, together uh, back in the uh, day. I think he won the Cy Young Award in the, I know he won it, I think it was 87, 88, somewhere right around there, MVP of, uh, of uh, World Series uh, and everything. In any event, let's take a look at Apple. So first, with regard to baseball eyeballs, the first question or the first aspect of the question was discussing the A to B equals CD to the downside. So let me show you what that looks like. The A point out here is going to be the high from the trading day of January 25th. The B point out here is going to be the low from January 29th. And the C point out here, the trading day of February the 9th. What we had out here was a 1 to 1.272, A to B equals CD. Now, it wasn't confirmed until this little bull sash candle on March the 9th confirmed that pattern. So we use bullish or bearish reversal signals to confirm a bottom or confirm a top out there. We need the cavalry to let us know that they have arrived. Now, your stop would need to be, if you're long, of course, you may adjust it by now, but it would certainly we need to be below support, and support would have been below 116.21, the low of that, can of that uh, prior day's candle that uh, from the bull sash. In any event out here, so we have the A to B equals CD to the downside. Now we've got an A to B equals CD to the upside. Let's go and take a look at that. The A point starting at the low from the trading session of March the 8th. The B point, the trading session of March the 11th. The C point, one day retracement into March the 12th. You'll see that the one to one A to B equals CD has been hit. Happens to be at 126.16. 
Now, right at that 126.16-ish area, it's not exactly 126.16. Let me just erase it. It's at 126.22 is resistance, is where sellers are at. So it also makes sense that it's going to be difficult for Apple to get through this resistance level because you know ahead of time. So you have a competitive advantage. You already knew in the case of Apple where the sellers were lined up. What we don't know, neither you nor I, what the profiles don't tell us is whether or not buyers are going to be able to take out that level. Are they going to be able to take it out with conviction? You know, conviction here would be passing the B point, which had volume on March 11th of 103 million shares with volume. Well, guess what? We're basically halfway through the trading session, 9.30, 10.30, 11.30, 12.30, 30. So we're a little bit more than halfway through the trading session. You've got volume of 74 million shares. It looks like it may pass that with volume. When you gap up into a D point, now this may be something that baseball eyeballs wasn't looking at. But here we now have an A to B equals C to the upside. When you gap up into a D point, that is not how D points usually end. That is not how the A to B equals CD pattern usually ends. That's suggesting to you and I that Apple should make its way to 128 to the 130 level. Now, let's go from the daily time frame chart and let's come back and take a look at the weekly. At the same time that Apple was making the Gartley buy pattern last week on the daily time frame, price was also testing support. And this is a bullish structured weekly profile. And so that support held. So in addition to the daily time frame pattern, you also had the weekly time frame pattern. And this week, if price is able to close above the center of that bullish structured weekly profile, which is 125.69, if price is able to close above that on Friday, that's going to be your signal that price is getting ready to move to the 133.55 level. So Apple gaps up. It's not a red flag. It's a red flag if you're trying to sell. So if you were going to sell the A to B equals CD pattern, yeah, there's a red flag that says don't do it. It says do not do it. You might decide to do it, but the gap up is saying do not do it. So I hope that helps you out. Baseball eyes in our YouTube channel. Let's go to our next question. Our next question coming in here from uh, Michael M. Michael M. in Sarasota. Mike wants to take a look at uh, 3M. So let's get this going on all of our charts out here and see what he's looking at. If you have time, MJ as well, looking to buy call options for April expiration. All right, so let's go take a look at uh, 3M, get a feel for what it's doing, what it's not doing. Right now, what it is doing, it's up above its daily, weekly, and monthly profile. So it's up above those resistance levels. So that just says we've got to go determine, is there any kind of pattern associated with the current high that's out there? As we take a look at the daily time frame, what we're going to see is yesterday was bar number eight of a TD9 count. Today looks like it's going to be bar number nine. So you're going to have a valid TD nine count pattern inside of 3M. Mike, that would then suggest to you and I, price at a minimum should pull back and test support. And the first support level is going to be its oscillator and change line. Currently, that's printed at 184.29. Forget the sense. They're going to go up and down. It's in the 184 ballpark area. So if you're looking for call options out there, that would be a place to look. But the problem is you would prefer to see price pulling back to that level, not really with a TD9 count or any kind of a top in there. But uh, if price closes below that, that's going to suggest a retracement back probably to the 177.27, could be 178.67 level. If you take a look at the last TD9 count that was out there, you had a pullback for about three to four days. Uh, out here so you may get something similar so the daily time frame is saying be careful because there is a short at least a short-term topping signal that is in play the weekly time frame chart says mike should be looking for a call option inside of 3m why no topping pattern in play and instead just the opposite last week was a change in trend signal for its intermediate term time frame now this developed a td9 bottom Price closing above 180.59 and staying above 180.59 today says Mike is on the right trail there. It's just a matter of trying to find the right entry point. The monthly time frame says, ah, oh, geez, we got a TD9 count out here this month. So this could be a high in the month of uh, March out there. Now, it's not ideal, the signals that you're getting here for the different time frames, Mike. But maybe what you do is watch that daily time frame, recognize that on a monthly basis there could be a top this month. Or next month. Of course, there could be one, not at all. But nonetheless, they, the signals are the signals. So what do you do? You take a look at a 30-minute time frame. You try to figure out what's going on here. Here we can see a Rhodes momentum indicator top. And price is pulled back. And price is below the oscillator and change line. It's below its 30-minute uh, set of profiles out there. 
But, geez, Mike, this is saying price could pull back to 178.13. Is Stevie saying that? No. I'm not going to give you the 178.13. Instead, there's an A to B equals CD pattern that may be forming out here. We can't call it that just yet. Uh, but the 30-minute chart here is suggesting that price might pull back. So with regard to 3M, the suggestion is at a minimum, because of what we're looking at here, is wait to see what happens in that 184 level before you go ahead and put that trade on. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to 3M. The second question was to take a look at MJ, Michael Jordan. That is actually um, the ETF, Managers Trust, Alternative Harvest out there, otherwise known as the pot stocks. If we take a look at the pot stocks out here on a daily basis, you're going to see that price is yesterday is, yesterday did, close above resistance, the top of that daily profile. That level is 24 bucks, even Steven. And what has it done today? It's pulled back to test old resistance that may become new support. That's at 24 buck level, and then continue to move higher. Mike would ask the question: Move higher to where? That would be 2651. 2651 is the next resistance level. That's the top of the weekly profile. Price is above the top of the monthly profile out there. So, Mike, when we get back from this breakout here, we'll go queue up MJ on my white background charts. We'll see if there's any signals out here for you, or maybe an additional price objective other than 26. 51. I don't know whether that's going to make the right uh, reward risk for you inside of MJ. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200% in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once-in-a-generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with tom o'brien and using his best-selling book the art of timing the trade your ultimate trading mastery system david white has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology using this first of its kind program the art of timing the trade charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for fibonacci formation setups including gartley's abc's butterflies and much more the art of timing the trade charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we got the Dow off 116. S&P is up uh, three. We're going back to MJ, ticker MJ. That is the uh, alternative harvest uh, ETF, the uh, pot stocks out there. And uh, so, Mike, when we take a look at my white background charts, we see that right now today, price is both testing the top of that daily profile as well as its oscillator and change line. So the preference here for the continued move higher would be a close above 24.25. What happens if it closes above 2405 but below 2425? Then they get a kind of neutral signal with regard to that. If it closes below 2406, that would then suggest a further retracement, maybe 2151 out there. So that's what the daily time frame chart is suggesting to us. Let's go take a look at the 30 minute chart, see if there's any signal. So here, so very similar to the other instrument that we looked at for you. I forget which one was 3M. Here we have a confirmed seventh wave move top, roads momentum indicator top, price below the uh, below the TAS market profiles, and ah, 2392. I just needed to hit the repopulate button. You're gonna watch, Mike, 2392. That's its breakout area. So from a risk standpoint, if it hits 2392, you probably need to have an order above 2392, make it like 2395 or something like that. Um, it would be an entry point based upon price pulling back to its breakout area. In a price close below 2392, I'd take that small loss, whatever that is, hopefully it would be a small loss, and jettison the position because that would then be suggesting to you and I on a short-term basis or an A to B equals CD to the downside, it may be a move back to 2170. That's the 30 minute. What's the 65 minute? 65 minute chart is suggesting the same thing, Mike. So it's saying that uh, 2361 is where it might find a level of support, but it also has topping signal, the 130 minute. What do we have out here? You've got a TD9 count. This is saying 2370, but 2260. So the short term time frames with regard to alternative harvest have got those topping signals out there to suggest some lower price, Mike. And we just need to see what patterns form on those 30 minute time frame charts as price. But again, we have an area at least to watch and observe. That's at 2392 level. So I hope that helps you out with regard to both 3M and MJ. Let's go to our next question out here. Next question coming in from drum roll Johnny. That would be Tim M. Tim says, uh, please take a look at uh, Ribbon Technologies. Ribbon Technologies is R B B N. So let's go punch up Ribbon Technologies out here, see what, in fact, it is doing. Where is it trading? It is consolidating with inside its daily and its weekly profile. So on a daily basis out here, Tim, you've got support at 804 and resistance at 908. You're looking for support and resistance levels. Well, there you go. And you're looking for a long entry on the daily and the weekly time frames. we got to go take a look at the white background charts for sure to figure this one out. Uh, see what kind of bottom, if any bottom, formed on March the 8th out there. You've got a consolidation of bear structured weekly profile. Mm, signal here based upon when it formed. This price would like to get back to 672. So the daily says I want to get up to 908. The weekly says, okay, go up to 908, but then take me down to 672. Let's pull over ribbon. Ribbon Communications. Let's take a look at Stevie's other white background chart. So we're interested in, as it was making, oh, there we go. As it was making a high, what was it doing? Rhodes Mintum Indicator Top, wave number seven, that's letter G out there. As it was making its bottom, it was a TD nine cow bottom. So it was the bar following bar number nine. That's the trading day of, the trading day of, of uh, March the 4th, and price never closed below that low. That retains that bottoming signal. Now what price is doing out here, Tim, it's testing the oscillator and change line. Your buy point on this, assuming that price doesn't close above 870, is at 804, 821 level. If price closes over 870, it's on its way to 908. If price closes over 908, it's on its way to 1036. Do the short-term time frame charts give Tim the opportunity to move lower, for price to move lower? You know, the 30-minute time frame chart does have a road momentum indicator top. We just have a sideways movement. You would need to see a close below 856 to suggest getting in at about the 805 level. 65-minute time frame chart, I don't have anything out here as a uh, top, so I'm probably not going to have anything on the 130. Yeah, I don't, I don't there. So back to your question, ribbon, R-B-B-N, Support, we've given you that. By the way, if price broke through the TD9 count, you'd be looking at 662. 
Uh, you asked about the weekly time frame as well. The weekly time frame for ribbon looks pretty good, but I need to see the close this week to make that determination. Price is really sitting right on that oscillator and change line. So it's not really clear to me from this time frame what it's trying to do. Focus on the daily right now. 870, a close above that, you're going to see 908. If it doesn't close above it, it may pull back into that 804, 821 level. And that's where you could go ahead and fire away on ticker symbol RBBN. That was for Tim. The next question coming in from, wow, another Tim. How about that? We got Tims all over the place. And this Tim, this is Tim B. And Tim says, can we take a look at BKNG? We most certainly can. Booking Holdings, BKNG. So I believe that's one of the uh, leaders to the downside, BKNG out here. And your question is uh, looking at a long position. So what we know right now is that you're in full breakout mode on the weekly and monthly. Price right now has been contained by the top of its daily profile. That's at 2418.61. It's slightly bearish in structure. The first level of support, the next level of support on the way down, is going to be 23.23. The ultimate buy area, you're looking for a long position, is going to be the bottom of that daily profile. And that's at 22.28. Nothing really signaling just yet that that's what's going to happen out here. But you, you can't see you've got at least a consolidation top in place. You don't have a consolidation bottom. That just simply requires getting back to the swing points from March the 5th, March the 4th out there. All right, let's take a look at BKNG on the white background charts. On the white background charts, nothing other than the consolidation that we looked at. So no other signal to help us there. On a weekly time frame chart, as we take a look at BKNG, um, no topping signal at all. So this is, in fact, is suggesting that it wants to move higher out there. The monthly time frame, see what kind of signal, if anything, is present here. A TD nine count pattern. Bar number eight was last month. Bar number nine would be this month. The month is not over. And we know that the high can form on the bars following bar number nine or bar number eight. So it could be a high uh, next month. It could be a, a, a decent top next month. But we don't have that pattern as we speak right now on the uh, daily time frame. So you're looking for an entry point at this stage of the game. It's going to be 22.28 or 23.23. Um, they just have a consolidation going on on the 30-minute time frame. That would really get you down into about the 23.44-ish range out there. So if that's the case, that 23.23 may be an area where you want to go ahead and take a position. But what I would suggest, Tim, be is watch the uh, patterns on the 30-minute time frame. Ideally, you'd get an A to B equal CD to the downside, maybe a TD9 count, something along those lines. So thank you very much for writing in, and I hope that helps you out. And best of luck with booking holdings out there. The next question coming in from John F. John writes in and says, it looks like John wants to take a look at Amazon. So let me get this. We're going into a break here. Let's do this. I'll read John's question fully. Actually, I'll read it right now. Looking to take a trade position in Amazon between 3050 and 3100 since the queues appear to want to go higher short term. So let's take a look at that. We'll get back to this break. Ticker symbol AMCM. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Peter White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. back uh, folks so uh, john f is looking for a tradable position inside of amazon and as we take a look at the amazon charts out here it's really the weekly chart that paints the picture and it paints the picture of this consolidation and uh, john the consolidation really the range is approximately 31 i'm sorry 2871 you're at 3050 so uh, the bottom of the weekly profile is 3020 but really the bottom of its range the consolidation range more closer um, to the uh, level of 28.71, and with regard to the top, really the 33.52 ish area, um, would you know you're looking at a range of 30.50 to 30.30 30, 3100. I think maybe that's your entry area here. Um, when we look at the daily time frame chart, you can see that price is up near the top of its profile, 31.89. No confirmed A to B or C D pattern. You can see a descending trend line. That's another resistance level. So would I suggest that you take a trade inside of Amazon? Oh, do what you want for sure. Uh, buy more closer to the bottom of the uh, consolidation than where it's at now. At least even thirty twenty, another seventy bucks lower out there. But I would think because you're trying to take this based upon you seeing the Qs want to go higher. And so if we take a look at the QQQ ETF, I think the better trade would just simply to be to go along the QQQ versus trying to take Amazon, which is a consolidation. Right now, the Qs are trading above a B point. That is March 11th. That B point out there has volume of 53 million shares. You're at 32 million shares right now. I don't know if you're going to get up to the uh, 53, but if you did, you'd have a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern. Now, let's open up the daily time frame. We may have covered this before. For covering it again, my apology. But here you'll see the one to one would take you up to 333.80. And it's a better looking pattern. Prices above resistance, that's the top of the profile, taking out a B point. Uh, this would be the better of those two trades out there. I'm more comfortable giving you this information here than trying to come up with something on that consolidation pattern inside of Amazon. If you look at the retracement here, the B to C leg retracement is less than a 0 0.382. So this communicates to us that the Q should do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. Instead of targeting 333, they really should target 339. But in taking that trade inside of the Qs, that then means you got to go back to the NQ out here. And what you're really looking for there as a confirmation, this is how I'd put it together, since you're not in the trade just yet, would be seeing the Q, the NQ, close above 13206.90. 
Right now you're at 13,175. So, John, I hope that makes sense, the way that I've laid things out here, at least in reading the charts. And uh, I would say uh, being along the Qs versus Amazon would be the better of those moves for you. So thanks so much for writing in. Much appreciated. Phone lines are open. Email lines are open. That was the last question we had by email. And uh, we also, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, our, our instant messaging inside our Tiger's Den is open as well. So while things are open, Stevie will just tool around here, see what we see that makes sense. Let's go look at the New York Stock Exchange. Let's go take a look at advanced decline oscillator, still above zero. That is a bullish. Your trade, it's a 51.45 out there, so no damage. In, oh, I know what we should do. Let's do this. Uh, let me get over to my set of charts out here. That take a look at the, uh, the, the indices, the cash indices. We rarely do this. Give me a moment to change up the screen that I'm sharing with you because we want to just go understand, hey, today's activity, does it have any kind of meaning? Of course, it has meaning. We're just trying to understand what kind of meaning. So now what you should see, you should see the Dow in the upper left and the New York Stock Exchange in the lower right. We can see here in each case of these eight indices we're looking at, the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ 100, the Russell 2000, semis, transports, NASDAQ Composite, New York Stock Exchange, prices above the oscillator and change line, and each of those are green. So right now that says any pullback is nothing more than just a retracement, unless price closes below those oscillator and change line. You can see on your screen what those levels are. But if you take a look at the instrument that has performed the worst today, that would be the Dow Jones Transports. Uh, today may be, should be, bar number eight of a TD9 count. Yesterday was uh, wave number seven, that's letter G out there, but price just tested and so far has rejected the oscillator and change line, 13,991. If price closes below that, that's going to tell you that there's going to be a further retracement. Probably will negate the TD9 count pattern that's out there, but that doesn't matter. Otherwise, everything else here looks pretty good. New York Stock Exchange may generate a road momentum indicator top, but not a problem unless you see a close below its oscillator and change line. That is at 15,617. So we take a look at the cash indices out here. Really no trouble in River City as we speak right now. Okay, so I thought we would do that. We've done that. Now what are you going to do, Steve? Oh, you still got, still got time for the tour. Where are we going to head to? Well, um, good question. I don't know. Uh, let me get back to my screen here. There we go. And uh, what do we want to take a look at next? What do we want to take a look at next? Global flow of capital. Might as well take a peek into that. What do we see here? We see the Dow up anywhere between 9 and 13%, depending on which currency. The leader, leader out here. The leader to the upside since January of these instruments. Well, indices. We're not going to talk about Lightspeed Crew that's up 35%. 35% rate of change since uh, January 1st. Thank you, Biden administration. Really taxing the shenanigans out of the poor. Uh, yesterday, I went to fill up uh, one of my cars. $4.02 a gallon. Four oh two. You don't see the chart? Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, that's where Stevie kind of uh, sharing all these screens. That's why I usually keep it in one screen. Makes it a little bit easier. Let's try this here. Here you can see the or should see the uh, rate of change out there. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Love the wingmen out here and wing women inside the uh, Tiger's Den. They kind of keep me uh, uh, straight. So now you're seeing the uh, rate of change out there. And you see that the Dow, it's really a tie right now between the Dow and the Nikkei. Out here, The reason why we're looking at this, we're trying to understand whether there's a global flow of capital that's making its way somewhere out here from an indice standpoint. Right now, that somewhere happens to be the U.S. If that's the U.S., that's going to bode well for our markets moving higher out here. Um, what else can we look at? How about the poor performing areas? The U.K. performing poorly. The DAX performing poorly. The Shanghai performing poorly. Australia not really performing that well out here. Emerging markets not performing well either. Um, just simply the commodity sector, Goldman Sachs Commodity Index up 19% rate of change since the beginning of the year. We talked about West Texas Intermediate Crew. And we've got Bitcoin out there up 75% since uh, the uh, January 1st time frame. Okay, what do we want to take a look at uh, next in the next 30 seconds out here? We take a look at Goldilocks. Really not much to report here. In the case of uh, gold, well, there is a, oh, interesting. 
there's a brand new weekly profile. So this is changing positions out here. Uh, earlier in the morning, it was at different levels. But this shows, uh, you can look at Z. Yeah, we can look at the Z when we come back from this uh, breakout here. Uh, but right now, you can see that uh, gold is into resistance areas, the top of its daily profile, 1736, and the center of a new profile it's trying to form for the weekly time frame, which is at 1737. Here's the deal. You close above 1737, you're headed to 1758. That's what the charts are saying as of 1.50 in the afternoon on this beautiful March the 16th. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Hope you're right. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's uh, go take a look at uh, Zillow. Ticker symbol is uh, Z out here. Trading right now at 147.18. And we can see, taking a look at the daily time frame, that, uh, yeah, price has made its way above the top of its daily profile, but right into some trend line resistance out here. So it's really trading out here, S&P, in between support and resistance. Because support is going to be old resistance, the top of its daily profile, the 146.30 level. Now, will remain that way unless we see a close below that. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on on Stevie's white background charts. And as we take a look at the daily time frame, we're also going to see that price is below the oscillator and change line. So you really need to see Zillow close above for two consecutive closes, 
about the 152.67 level to suggest that you're going to get 189 out of this. On a further pullback, support could be in the area of 136.74 or 127.19. That's the center and bottom of that daily profile. On a weekly basis, when we take a look at the Zillow out here, Zillow has a TD9 count top, but price is pulled back to test support. And that nice support is at the 125.30 level. Price is below the oscillator and change line, so you're not getting any kind of a breakout message there. The monthly chart looks very good for Zillow, although actually this has a TD9 count top as well. And that's suggesting that price could pull back to test its oscillator and change line in the 112.98 level. So Zillow. Just looking on the 30-minute time frame, is there any type of signal there that would help you? No signal here. We're really looking for some breakout support areas, and I just don't have them. So in the case of uh, Zillow, at this stage here, you've got to watch the top of that daily profile because the signal suggests that if you do see a close below the top of that profile, and there's not an indication whether we will or won't, but that is at the 146.30, then you would prepare for a further retracement. That further retracement taking you back into the 127, 146 area. Folks, thanks so much for being here on Terrific Taco Tuesday. But stay tuned for two more great hours. Your favorite polar bear, David White. He's up next. After David, you've got Tom O'Brien to take us on home. And uh, be safe out there. Have a terrific Tuesday. And we'll look forward to seeing you on wonderful Wednesday.